Good morning. Today is Wednesday, September 6th. We arrived in port last night, and this morning after breakfast, we're going to do a walking tour on our own of the town. We're going to have a bite of lunch on the cruise ship and then get ready for our excursion. On the, on the journey. Uh, and present you the beautiful West Fjords. 
Uh, the typical difference of Westfjords to other territories of Iceland uh, are the valleys and the mountains around. So the territory is uh, quite large, it's about the size of uh, maybe 10 times uh, New York City. Uh, but the people can live only on the coast and inside the fjords. So uh, from the amount of uh, 7,000 uh, people living here in West Fjords, uh, 3,000 lived he here in Isafjord, which is the administrative uh, uh, center of uh, West Fjords, you could say. Picture very uh, narrow sliver of land uh, with beaches on both sides. Uh, probably width of this uh, road uh, with fish drying uh, on the ground so everything uh, here in uh, Westfjords is uh, revolving around fisheries and has been for many hundreds of years uh, Westfjords themselves uh, are the oldest uh, theologically oldest part of Iceland uh, with 18 million years uh, of age uh, which sounds a uh, long time ago, but uh, you have to think that this is way after the dinosaurs died out. So uh, it's a, an old baby, uh, Westfjords. Uh, in itself, it's uh, older than the rest of the country. Therefore, there is hardly any geothermal activity. Uh, we don't get any uh, earthquakes uh, whatsoever. Now, if you please look uh, on uh, the leftish front, uh, above the houses, behind them, you will see a system of uh, uh, small walls. Uh, those are man-man uh, mounds, uh, which purpose is uh, to uh, intercept any uh, possible avalanches. We get lots of avalanches every winter and these walls are built there to protect uh, the housing. Without these walls, uh, there could be no uh, extending of uh, Isafjordur. Uh, you will recognize these little mounds on uh, fences which are built on uh, top of these uh, mounds. <coughs> the fences are necessary as on the opposite side from the back there is a straight drop down and kind of a hollow space uh, for the snow which can drop from the mountains. So you will see these mounds everywhere around the uh, town of uh, Isafjordur. Also uh, on the mountain, the middle mountain at the bottom of the fjord, on the dark side, uh, you can see these uh, horizontal lines in the hillside. So these fences were installed there by a helicopter and the same thing, they are there to protect the housing under them uh, from, uh, from avalanche because this uh, mountain uh, tended to build up one huge slab of uh, icy snow and then crash down from the hill. Uh, by installation of the, these uh, uh, fences, uh, it's uh, prevented uh, this build-up of one single slab and uh, the smaller ones are easier manageable. Uh, and therefore, uh, tunnels uh, have been a very good solution. Uh, though it took quite a while for the strategy of uh, government to change because there was a long-standing policy uh, to attempt to evacuate uh, the West Fjords. Uh, completely empty them of, uh, of uh, settlements, uh, which has changed uh, sometime in the 90s. Now this is the promised scary tunnel. It has been opened after five years uh, of building in 1996 and is a real luxury. Uh, in uh, snowstorms in winter. To use the tunnel as soon as possible, there was a compromise uh, with the authorities of municipality met and uh, uh, the people were willing to drive over this tunnel for the first months uh, without tarmac, so no asphalt on the road, so you were driving on gravel in complete darkness as the lights were not installed yet. And uh, you can notice also these uh, concrete uh, carpets on the ceiling and walls of the tunnel, uh, which is uh, a role is to disperse and to guide away the water that otherwise would be crashing on the roof of the bus. So in complete darkness on uh, gravel with waterfalls through the cracks uh, of the ceiling, that was uh, the beginning of uh, this tunnel in 96. On the 
foothill on the right you can see uh, a farm uh, which uh, breeds uh, uh, for the most sheep uh, they breed also Icelandic cows and uh, another farm behind us uh, breeds uh, also Icelandic horses uh, all these domestic animals were brought to the country by the first settlers a thousand years ago uh, there were several experiments in uh, uh, improving uh, the breed of uh, sheep and cows but in these uh, conditions uh, they didn't do very well so it was back to the original uh, Icelandic uh, breed from thousand years ago uh, for example the cows that uh, are bred in Iceland are slightly smaller uh, produce less milk than the contemporary commercially bred cows but their milk is uh, way richer in uh, protein than uh, than any other breed so in textiles uh, you don't have to shear them uh, they will lose the fleece somewhere in the nature where you can then find it like little carpets when you're hiking and uh, you can notice that they are happily resting uh, in this weather uh, this is caused by the structure of their uh, uh, wool. Uh, it consists of two different kinds. Uh, the bottom layer is uh, fluffy, soft, curly and uh, warm. Uh, keeps a lot of air in itself and the top coat uh, is uh, coarse, greasy with uh, lanolin, uh, which gives uh, uh, the wool uh, water repellent uh, uh, properties. Uh, lanolin is uh, skin fat of uh, sheep uh, and this uh, long coarse fatty uh, layer falls over in bad weather uh, over this uh, warm uh, under layer and uh, creates kind of a raincoat uh, the territory of uh, Iceland uh, at that point was divided into 36 different uh, districts uh, now uh, Iceland is divided into six districts only and uh, right now there is uh, 63 uh, members of uh, Parliament Althingi uh, It's quite interesting uh, that uh, in some parts uh, for the winter uh, the road uh, uh, authorities uh, place additional sticks as we have this uh, uh, yellow side uh, uh, pillars uh, next to the road then the uh, longer ones are uh, introduced uh, and uh, it's not only the sheep on the road they, they actually love to sleep uh, next to the road as uh, the asphalt uh, uh, keeps uh, the warmth for the night so they're cuddling up to the asphalt uh, it's also uh, uh, birds, uh, the gulls love uh, using uh, the asphalt as a can opener. So they take uh, large shells uh, from the water and toss them on the ground to smash them. So you can see this tunnel is uh, completely different. It's built uh, in uh, accord with uh, European Union. Uh,
with the water and uh, once it's uh, frosted over in the morning they bring it inside so it is believed that uh, on this way you are pulling in so these uh, long houses uh, were lived in by several families in a large space uh, where uh, uh, the walls here in Iceland would be built from uh, from salt so We are back in this adventurous tunnel, uh, but we are now in the direction that everybody has to keep uh, uh, right of the way. So it will be faster than uh, on the way there. And here we are above Isapjörnur, uh, again completely different weather. And you can really see what I meant by how narrow uh, Isapjörnur is. It is really this uh, narrow strip <laughs> and here on the left side we are passing uh, Isafjörder uh, brewery so uh, the beer is brewed here on the premises and you can uh, taste it here and hereby we are arriving where we departed for dinner tonight we're eating at Candles which is the third restaurant on the cruise ship I just spoke to the bridge in about in about four and a half minutes you're gonna feel a little bump <laughs> because we are crossing the Arctic Circle. So for all of you in here, we're going to make two lines here. Don't get up now. Right? We make two lines here. And I still miss the blue, the blue nose collar. Um, what we're going to do, I invited the, the one and only, the master and commander of Star Pride, Captain Mark Roden, who's going to join me. And the two of us, him and myself, we're going to give you all a blue nose. Let's go, let's do that. Music! <laughs> 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 